A wizard wanders the wilderness, cursed, beaten, and battered, his life slowly fading away. He only has one chance left before he's out of time. Exactly two years ago today, on January the 29th, 2021, I released my first game in what would become a sprawling saga. The game represented a lot of things for me. It was my first attempt at a new art style, aptly named the Shake Images and Throw in Particles technique. It was my first time doing fairly well ratings-wise, but more on that later. It was also my first chapter in a challenge I was lovingly calling 12 games, 12 months, one story. Basically, over 365 days, I wanted to make 12 games that were interlocked with one story. I had some vague ideas, but nothing definite yet, which is apparently the way all franchise stories are written these days. The only thing I knew for sure is that I wanted each game to be submitted to a game development competition because of a magic little thing I like to call free marketing. So, with a vague goal, I kept my eyes open, and on January the 23rd, 2021, I joined a game jam with the theme of less is more, and I got to work. The idea for the game was something I had actually had for a little while. What if the player's health and ammo were interlocked as the same value? Given the theme was less is more, I decided that when the player's health gets low, the damage goes up. That seemed interesting, but so did having the player's speed go up with low health. Both seemed interesting apart, but sounded too chaotic together, so I designed a game where you pick up different items with special abilities called artifacts. It was great, but the game needed a story and needed characters. So, meet my first ever named protagonist, Frankton the Wizard. Why is he named that? I have no idea. That's the issue with making a reflection video two years later. What I do remember is getting a prototype together. I got my wizard in the game and moving and gave him the ability to shoot fireballs. As you may have noticed, the art isn't the best. I was working on this project solo, plus this was a long time before AI generated art could give me a fighting chance. This is the best I could do. I added in a simple enemy, just a goblin who would stand still and shoot arrows. I know, super threatening, right? I got tired of looking at the black background, so I added in a sample map using art from the Kenny 1-bit pack. I then got each of the artifacts into the game and functioning. I made it so the player could only hold one at a time to reduce the chaos. Next, I created a mysterious knight who could take each of the artifacts from you. I quickly realized you didn't have to fight any of the goblins and could just run around them all. I made it so the wizard was slowly dying from a curse and that the goblins had a chance of dropping health. That way, the player was forced to kill enemies and actually use the combat system. I made it so you had to give all of the artifacts to the knight to be cured of the curse, and boom, just like that, I had a story. The only issue was that the player's health was constantly draining and it wasn't fun to kill a goblin and not get any health back. So, I made a new artifact called the Necklace of Vampirism. This became a way for a player to kill enemies and always get health back from them. Since vampires can't go into sunlight, I made it so if you leave the temple, you just burst into flames. A cool feature, but I'm not sure a single person ever actually discovered it. The combat was feeling flat, so I added in some juice to make the game feel better. A good amount of screen shake plus arrows sticking out of the player when hit did the trick. And just like that, I had a little prototype together. It was fast paced, fun, and even had a solid story. With all the mechanics in, I began fleshing out the prototype into a game. My main focus became the enemies. In my previous games, the bad guys had either been super generic or extremely glitchy. I wasn't sure how best to program enemies, so it turned into a lot of copying and pasting of code, just tweaking functions here and there. I made a swordsman with a very glitchy sword, but he can actually run around and chase the player. Sometimes. I made an assassin that was just the swordsman, but quicker and with a knife. I also made a ghost that just floated through walls. And lastly, I made a slow-moving behemoth who has a high health and throws a boulder at you. With the enemy pool feeling full, I moved on. I decided to do my first and only attempt at voice acting with death quotes for the ghost. Your curse will be your end. I finally ditched the prototype map and made a tutorial forest area, followed by the main area of the temple. The inside of the temple is feeling too bright, so I gave it a blue tint. I then created different rooms branching off, such as the red room, the blue room, and everyone's favorite, why is it so dark in here? Room. After that, the game was basically done. I put in some music in the main menu, I did some bug fixing, and submitted a game. Let's see what my friend thinks, because I couldn't get anyone else at the last minute. I have to shoot fireballs towards your mouth. Oh, but that cuts my life away, okay. I have to fight my wizard instinct to just spam fireballs. I love his little wiggle walk. Yeah, I got really lazy with the art. I mean, it was a new innovative art style. <laughs> Ooh. Plus a vampirism. Oh, they respawn. Yeah, I did that so like you'll never actually like run out of things to kill and just permanently run out of health. Oh yeah, that's, that seemed that's a touch unfair. I do kind of wish I could manually move the camera a bit, but I don't know how you program that. Boots of less is more. 
Ooh, you go much slower. Maybe I won't save. <laughs> yeah, if you shoot some health away, you can actually start to go really fast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah wow, you really... You, you outrun the health. All right, I like that. It's the it's a cool change. You gotta balance it just a bit. Like the arrow sticking out of his head. <laughs> yeah, I was actually just about to point that out. I was like, dang, he took that hit. Ooh, a spooky specter. He got like the Minecraft diamond swords. I do like the gameplay a lot. I like the the balancing act. Out of Time was a strong start for the series, getting 54th out of 1,073 games in the overall category. It was briefly featured in the background of the Best Of video by the YouTube channel hosting the challenge. There I am, Gary, there I am! These results gave me a solid footing and confidence for the future. It let me know that this little experiment had the potential to be something amazing. My main takeaway at the time was that graphics aren't everything in a competition. What matters is consistency. Even with my lackluster art, I managed to get 279th in the visual category, which is great for just images shaking around. That being said, it has also been a lingering question. How much better could this game have done if I worked with a real artist? Could I have taken it all? That 279th place is definitely dragging down the overall score a bit. That being said, I try not to focus on it, as there's no dwelling on what could have been. What I knew then, and what I know now, is that I'm only just getting started. I had 11 games left to make, and no time to waste. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to be notified of when part two of this series drops, where I detail the next game in the series, Armor of God. If you're early and that video is not out yet, you can also check out my last video where my friend Jared and I attempted to use an AI image generator to recreate Bowser from Super Mario Brothers. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.